it out uh, just just because I'm still watching it but it's it's really it's it's the stuff has gotten repetitive we still talking about the barbecue we took about three episodes talking about the expo uh, and we finna get back off into this cheating stuff again with Martel talking about mail um, it's just they don't have it they don't have any storylines and it's just I'm just over it and with Kiki too talking about Marceau cheating. That's that's old too. We all know about that, and we all have come to terms with what we think it is, and we know Tisha's not going to uh, acknowledge anything about that. So it's just I'm just over it. But uh, anyway, let's get on with the review. Uh, we start off with let me see Mel and uh, Kiki. They're still at the storage unit, right? And Mel is telling Kiki about taking the the drug test. Uh, Kiki feels like she shouldn't have to take a test if, if Marceau's not going to take a, a lie detector test. She says, I'll take it if Marceau takes it. Uh, Mel convinces Kiki to go ahead and do it because, you know, it'll shut the haters down. And she won't have to hear about this anymore because they just still think she's on drugs. That's what the word is. And, you know, she says, just let's just put an end to it. Let's just go, go on and do it. And, you know, when it comes back negative, you know, you can just you can throw it in their face or whatever. So... Kiki t goes, takes the test right there on site and uh, comes back out, gives the cup to Mel, uh, pull the little tape off or whatever, look at the results, and it comes back negative to all kinds of uh, different drugs. So Kiki is clean. You know, she's not uh, using drugs. So we can go ahead and let that let that die down, let that lie go. Let's, let's get on, move on with something else. Uh, let me see. Mel also brings up to uh, Kiki that about uh, the Carlos and Tiffany uh, interview that they did. I didn't get to see it. But they said that Tiffany was talking, like the whole interview was pretty much about Kiki, you know. Kiki's like, Tiffany need to keep her name out of her mouth. And Kiki also said something about she heard Tiffany was talking about Stormy's products. Um, I don't I guess like her products aren't good. I don't know because like I said, I didn't see that interview. But they said she was talking about her also. And I think Stormy and... and uh, Tiffany are supposed to be cool, you know. So, next, we see Tisha and Marso. She's packing. They're getting ready to go on to a beach or something or for a little few days vacation for uh, Mila's birthday. That's what she requested. And, you know, Marceau's really not all for it, but since it's Mila, uh, he says he's going to go ahead and do it. They bring up the stuff about Kiki again. I think Marceau asked her, you know, how she feeling about things. Oh yeah, how she, she no, he told her she, he was proud of how she handled herself and he feels like, you know, he, he wish he should have, he, he could have handled things. He wish he would have handled things a different way. And he applauded her for that. Uh, he also told Tisha that, you know, he, he hates that he, you know, her and Kiki are having problems like this, you know, he wish it was a way uh stuff could be worked out differently he said also that even him and kiki had a moment and you know they're back on better terms i guess being that he connected with her in that moment when they was talking about the drug thing and you know i, I guess since he was finally able to break uh stormy down should i say because she actually showed i guess i don't know if it's because she acted like she's hard all the time but she actually cried about something with you know when he said when she mentioned that her best friend was on drugs and she used to stay with her and keep her, her child for her, but you know, she had to let her go because of the drug usage. Uh, so uh, all of a sudden, Marceau, I guess, is trying to show some compassion for people or be, um, I guess, uh, hold himself accountable for his behavior or I don't know what Marceau is doing at this moment, really, but he's trying to show us a softer side of Marceau, I guess. 
Anyway, he told Keisha, Tisha that, you know, she needs to be accountable for the way she behaves. It's not just other people's fault and Tisha's. Like, I do hold myself accountable. So, he gave an example of, he said, well, you didn't in that meeting when, you know, somebody offered you some constructive criticism when a particular person did. And she was like, what are you talking about? Give me an example. And, of course, he was ready to give it to her. He told her it was an instant, in the instance when Mel said that things weren't in order uh, as far as getting the the expo together like that it, it, it didn't roll smoothly stuff wasn't probably it wasn't organized and you know of course Tisha didn't like what Mel said that and they kind of just I guess agreed to disagree on that because she felt like she did hold herself accountable she was acknowledging what she did and they both had a different way of how she said she responded to Mel's um, critique about not being organized so we see Mel at her home, you know, she has an event planner over. She's planning this event for her name change. Uh, she's going back to Rogers, which she probably is already. And you know, she's dropping the whole name. Um, and it, this, she's gonna have this big event in the backyard of her home. She's, you know, talking, her mom comes over and she's actually talking to her about it as well. She hadn't, hadn't opened up the papers yet until her mom came. That, there were the official papers to say that they were going to grant her the rights to change her name. So she didn't know what it said until she opened it right there on the spot. Her mama had an emotional moment. She said because she's been so strong through this and she's know, she knows what her daughter's been through. She's been there for her through the whole thing and been able, and, and, and had to watch her go through this whole ordeal with Martell and just other people talking about her and, and lying on her and things. And so she, she just felt really proud for her daughter. And she feels like I, this is an accomplishment in itself uh, to, to for her to get this done, you know, after everything. Uh, Mel tells us that uh, she she's never felt more at peace. She feels free. And she said the world met her as hoped and she's getting reintroduced as Rogers. And I thought that was, that was smart, Mel. You should have a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> that was pretty good. So, we see Stormy, she goes to check on Kiki. She again brings up the barbecue. Everybody's still talking about the barbecue, guys. She goes to the old house to talk to her. Just to see, you know, what happened. And, you know, and Kiki apologized to her for snatching those cards from her and throwing them on the table like she did. And, you know, Stormy, she didn't find it offensive because I guess her and Kiki, they understand each other like that, you know, as Stormy once said before. Her and Courtney really like Kiki. And they don't, you know... They never thought she was back on the drugs or anything. And they just, they think she's a pretty cool person. Kiki tells Stormy that, you know, she's just fed up with, with Tisha. She says just many people have tried to warn her about Tisha. Ever since she was 13 years old, she's been doing this to her, or mistreating her. And she's like, uh, uh, Tisha is delusional. She's like, girl, wake up. She says she should have known when, uh, when his when they showed his back on you know when she was showing his back because who don't know they they man back or they husband back or whatever like we knew it was his back and we ain't even married to him it's like you know that was Marceau Marceau back and Kiki also said Tisha should know he went to Africa by himself and didn't tell her anything about it that was just strange also how you do plan a whole you you can't just plan a trip trip for Africa tomorrow that that takes some planning uh. You can't just say I'm going to Africa and I forgot to tell you about it. And that's how they basically went with Tisha. And she's like, we, I'm about to get into the last season. I, and I don't want to do that because we're in this season, well, like I, which, like I said, is not giving anything, but we're going to stick where it is. So she was just saying, you know, how, I, like I said, Tisha's delusional. She knows what's going on. She's like, girl, wake up. She said it just hurts her that she loves Tisha so much, you know. If she did, it wouldn't be affecting her like it does. And I don't know if I believe this all, what this is about. I do believe uh, they, Tisha and Kiki has to have this, has this rival thing going on. They've been having it going on since they were younger. They have their times when they get along. And, you know, we best cousins. But then still, I think it's also some jealousy there on, I would say, each of their parts in some kind of way. Um, and so she just said, like, it's over. She doesn't, she's not, she's through with uh, Tisha. Tisha also says she's through with Kiki, so they're both on the same page there. Next, we see Mel. Anyway, she's invited uh, Kimmy and Tisha to come work out with her with her trainer. 
Kimmy, not Kimmy, Tisha shows up first. You know, Mel's trying to talk to her and stuff. Tisha's acting off. Both Mel and Kimmy noticed that things were a bit off with uh, Tisha. And Tisha tells us that, you know, she came. She really didn't want to come. Uh, she, you know, just rather be through with the whole thing. But don't, I'm just calm anyway. And since I was invited, uh, and that's exactly what she did. She showed up for her check, I guess. Um, but she really didn't want to be there at that moment. They worked out. And, you know, they sit down to have this conversation. Mel brings up the barbecue again. And she asked Kiki, not Kiki, she asked Tisha, you know, what happened? She's just saying that Kiki's on drugs, she's still using, you know, and this is how the behavior is with her when she's when she's that way. And she's used to that, you know, her acting like that. And she's just tired of it. Mel says, are you sure that's what it is? Not, it's nothing else. She said, because it seems like something deeper. And Tisha is like, no, that's it. Mel's like, are you sure? Nothing else. There's nothing else between, you know, this happened between you guys or before that happened that's caused you to get to this point. Tisha's still like, nope, nope, ain't nothing happened. So Mel brings up whoever this guy's name is. She barely gets it out. Tisha says, I'm finna go. Nope, not talking about it. Not finna do, we not finna do this. I'm finna go. And Mel's like, well, you know, I'm just, just trying to see, you know, what's, what's, what the deal is she says she's not talking about it she gets up and leaves when she leaves when as she's leaving mel and kimmy both you know mel is kind of like you know tisha she can keep playing like you know everything is good ain't nothing wrong everything is fine i'm happy and kimmy says you know i don't think it's from a standpoint of everything is good i'm, I'm happy it's just like i'm good about not talking about that anymore because they both agree there is a problem it's a problem but she doesn't want to talk about it. And can't nobody force her to talk about it. But she can't get mad when people bring it up. I guess she just keep doing what she's doing. Just get up and leave if she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. It's her prerogative. Um, and she doesn't have to talk about it if she doesn't want to. So, guys, next we have this stage uh, scene with Mel and Nell. I don't know what it was for other than to, let's get Martell some camera time because he hasn't, he hasn't had any. He doesn't have a storyline, so we're just going to work something in. So he comes up to Nell's home. Nell has a beautiful home, by the way. And she's out there doing uh, yard work. Well, watering her, fl her flowers and stuff. Nell says that she's, you know, is going to bring up the party to Martell so he won't be caught off guard. She lets him know that, you know, Mel is getting her name. Her, she's going back to her, her maiden name, right? Roger. And Martell's like, yeah, I heard something about it, you know. And she asks, how does he feel about that? And he says, you know, actually, he's kind of uh feeling the kind of way about it you know because they you know they got married and they you know thought they were going to be together and they he had like that's the name of their kids you know hope is or whatever he doesn't see why she's going back to rogers he says nothing nothing's good has happened for her for her better than uh when she was hope you know that's that's when her life changed with the hope name whatever and neil also lets him know that well, she's going to have a party, and I'm going to the party. And she said, so I just want you to know. And he's like, well, you know, it's, it, he said, I feel like it's messed up if any of my friends go to that party. And Neil's like, why? He says, because it's like you picking a side, uh, you showing who you with, uh, and he feels like Mel is being messy. And it's just like messing in his face or something. I don't know how <laughs> she's messing in his face, so he says. I don't know how that's messing in his face. Everything's not about you, Martell. This has nothing. I mean, he done flipped his eye already to make her having this party is to throw this in his face. And he's not invited. So I don't know how it's being thrown in his face. I don't know why it can't just be about her wanting her name changed. She doesn't, she doesn't want that name anymore. And that's what it is. And so he's, so Martell is still just saying, you know, that Mel is being spice, spiteful. Nell said, I could say you were missing in male face when you had that affair, when you cheated. Oh, here we go. We get to let up with the music. Like, Martell get to cheat it. She did it first. She did it first. This, here he go with the lie. Why can't he just accept what he did and just be through? Why he's still trying to make us think that woman cheated first? I know I don't believe she cheated first. He has no proof of that. He has not shown us any proof of that. When she did, whoever this guy she was with, not wit, but that she messed around or saw. I'm going to say that. 
they had, he had moved out the house. They had agreed they were going to be through whatever. She didn't think she was going back with him. And for some reason, she gave him one more chance, but she had no intentions on going back with Martell. Martell had been messing around the same woman for years. For years. And, I mean, this was one else that she did. He wanted to say she did it first. She started to cheat. And she, it's whatever, Martell, whatever make you feel better, Martell. Just, just go with it. Roll with it. If that makes you feel better, saying Mel cheated first, say it. But, you know, it makes no difference, neither here nor there. Y'all are divorced now. Uh, you're not together anymore. I don't know why we're going to revisit this again because he wants Nell to ask Mel about the cheat. Ask her, did she cheat? Have you done asked her, did she cheat first? Nell says no. And he says, you know, Nell said, well, you got me there? No, I didn't ask her. No, I didn't. You know, because I figured she didn't cheat. But he, she said she's going to ask. And he's like, ask. And quit trying to, quit. you, you always want to try to throw these men under the bus. You don't want to hold. You want Melly to be so innocent. You want to hold her accountable for the wrongdoing she did. You just want to keep looking at me and, and throwing daggers at me and, and blaming me for everything. So it's, it's just the same thing going through this. And that's pretty much what the episode was, guys. Like I said, a lot of repetitive conversations, a lot of revisiting, a lot of uh, stuff we've already visited. Uh, it's giving nothing. Uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville is like really, uh, I'm going to be done with it after this season. If it comes back, I don't even think I'm going to watch it anymore. But anyway, guys, don't forget to like the video. Um, leave me some comments. What you think about the episode? What episode? What are you feeling? How are you feeling about Love and Marriage Huntsville this season? You know, let me know what I left out. Um, and yeah, and that concludes this review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.